Blockchain, blockchain everywhere. Blockchain is the foundation of cryptocurrencies. But do you actually know how it works though? <laughs> like we hear buzzwords all the time, right? Blockchain provides the ability to decentralize, total transparency, hashing, proof of work. Everybody have a copy of the ledger. Corruption is impossible. Stuff, fraud, fraud is impossible. But how does it work though? Like, mm, being able to repeat buzzwords is not the same as actually knowing how it actually works. If you, like me, are kind of a programmer, technician, engineer type, and you want to know how it actually works, like you want to see the actual implementation, then this video is for you because I will be explaining in SADU code format how it actually works. So without going into language specific uh, keywords, by providing a very general framework, you will be able to use your programming language of choice to create your own cryptocurrency, assuming you understand everything that's being said in this video. So hopefully by the end of this video, you could call yourself, you know, the creator of the next big cryptocurrency or whatever. Let's go. Cryptocurrencies have many fancy names. You probably know a number of them yourselves, but whatever is their name, behind all of them is the same technology, the blockchain. You are looking at the visual representation of one now, and it goes on and on. Notice that I choose to display them one on top of another instead of arranging them in a grid-like manner, because this is the correct representation of how they really are. I could display them as a single horizontal row as well, but well, you get the point. Now for the purpose of education, the quantity of the blocks only serves to confuse. Let me reduce it to just 5 blocks for you. Here are some of the data inside a block. Understand that it can be far more complicated than that, but it doesn't serve for the purpose of education which is to help you understand the core concept so that you can create your own blockchain someday if you so wish to. Every block contains within itself the date of its creation, the amount of reward given to the person who mined the block. This, this is what it's all about. Contained within this object are the transactions, the transfer of money from one person to another. How many transactions are stored here, you might ask? That depends. Say for example, the first block took 2 minutes to discover, while the second one took 10 minutes. Assuming transactions are being executed at a constant rate, Obviously, the 10 minutes block will contain more transactional data compared to the 2 minutes block. There can also be file size imposed that limit for the number of transactions stored per block, but that has more to do with alleviating network congestion than the core concept of the blockchain, so I'm gonna give that a pass. The previous hash. Think of this as the overall identification of the block before it. The nouns only make sense when the concept of mining are being explained, which is later on. This is the overall identification of this particular block. So how is this string of text, also known as hash, calculated? Welcome to the world of mining. It's very important to know that transactions are not confirmed, verified, or set in stone, so to speak, until they are inside a block. Who is going to generate those blocks? Who is going to use their own computation power to generate those blocks for the transactions? You need incentives, right? This is where the whole idea of crypto mining comes in. If you were to generate those blocks to hold those transactions, you get paid for your effort for generating those blocks. Now let's talk about what goes into generating those blocks. To make sure that the following demo is true to life, I spent some time coding up a mini functional cryptocurrency from scratch in JavaScript that includes the ability to execute peer-to-peer -peer transfer, coin mining capabilities, and most important of all, blockchain anti-corruption protocols. 
However, since nobody will be using this cryptocurrency of mine besides me for the purpose of this video, I didn't spend any time implementing file I.O. and individual wallet components since nobody will be needing an external copy of the ledger for cross-reference blockchain integrity verification and the likes of it. Don't worry, you are understanding more and more now. As the video progresses, you will understand even more. So, back to the mining that I was talking about. As mentioned, the whole idea of mining a block is for it to hold transactional information. For educational purpose, let's just make two transactions. These two transactions are then automatically added to a list of other unconfirmed transactions. Now we need to confirm the transactions. The way to do that is to put the transactions into a block. Let's start the mining process. Let's break this code down in English. All we are doing here is throw into the SHA-256 algorithm a random seed, also known as nouns. The current date and time, the amount of reward that will be received if the mining is successful, the previous block hash identifier, and finally, all the unconfirmed transactions. In return, the SHA-256 algorithm will speed up the resulting hash from the combined data. However, as mentioned, we do not want to allow the generation of blocks easily. So we set it such that a hash can only be accepted if it has a certain number of zeros in front, in this case, 4. In our example, it ended up taking the computer 12,582 attempts to compute the hash that fits the criteria and it took a certain amount of time. This, my friend, is what mining is all about. In the real world, the data required to compute the hash will vary, along with the hash algorithm itself. But the principle is the same, and now you understand it. The core strength of the blockchain is that it cannot be manipulated. It is primarily protected by three barriers. The first barrier requires some computing power to break. The second barrier requires computation power directly proportionate to the number of blocks in the entire blockchain. The last barrier is virtually impossible to break unless you have control over everyone who utilizes the blockchain. Let's explore what those barriers are, shall we? Barrier 1. Internal Block Validation As mentioned, here are some of the possible data stored inside a single block and the hash that identifies the block is computed from all the data from within the block. If someone were to attempt to change even one tiny element of the block, the resulting new hash calculated from the now modified block will not match the original hash previously calculated, aka game over to whoever who tries to corrupt the system. But what if someone tries to erase any record of the previous hash by simply replacing the old hash with the newly calculated one by somehow bypassing any internal hash validation within the block itself? First of all, that's just ridiculous, unless whoever who programmed the block validation is the king of noobs. But assuming that happened, then it's time for barrier 2, blockchain cascading validation. As previously mentioned, every block contains the hash identifier of the block before it. If someone were to somehow change the data in the block by magically bypassing the block's internal hash validation, now they have to contend with the fact that the block on top holds a previous copy of the hash and that has to be changed as well. To do that, the someone have to recompute the hash for that block too. That in itself will take some time due to the difficulty level I have previously mentioned. Now, for cryptocurrencies that are actually being used, we're talking about not just one block, but thousands, millions, billions, trillions of blocks above it. Forget about it, it's game over. But, 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 let's just assume that some super alien computer can do all this. Seriously, we are already in ridiculous grounds here, but let's continue. Then it's time for the final barrier. Everyone who is using the blockchain. Remember I told you earlier that the power of the blockchain is that everyone have a copy of it? It's like you owning a bank, but everyone else also have an exact copy of your account book. Sure, you can tamper with your own account book, but can you tamper with everyone else's? Game over. 
with sufficient momentum, the blockchain will be the most impressive, uncorruptible accounting system the human race have ever come up with thus far. Good news, right? Well, we will see. As I've mentioned earlier on, transactions need to be confirmed by a block. Blocks are mined by people doing it to get paid. And there are some cryptocurrencies that set a hard limit for the amount of coins that will ever be produced. Now, I will end the video by asking you this one question. When the amount of coins that can be generated by a particular blockchain is reached and mining new blocks will no longer produce any more coins, what's gonna happen? If you understand what I've been teaching so far, this question will take a good amount of your time to ponder. This is Bracel Jack, signing off.